Metier is a project that we've been working on for a number of years. It was really kind of accelerated by various lockdowns around the world. And we had a number of musicians that wanted to work together. And we said, let's do this whole thing remotely and then we'll see where it leads. And it's led to a number of recordings, the first of which will be this first album called Please Yourself. We were looking to find a new way of recording remotely, but bringing it together in a way that felt as organic and as real and as musical as possible. And um, when we spoke to Audio Animals about this, they said, hey, we've just you know, kickstarted our new studio in Atmos. Maybe this would be a great project to use Atmos for. Um, and it, was, it couldn't have been more right. As soon as we were able to hear back what was done in Atmos, it was, it was game changing. It made us rethink not just what was possible with this record, but how we might record in the future as well. I think once you've heard your music in Atmos, it's impossible to go back to stereo. I just, I mean, yeah, sure, I guess we could go in a studio and do that. But I think once you've heard what's possible, especially with live bands, especially with bands that are meant to sound live, you know, in jazz setups, um, it's just a whole other world. It's a whole other world of, of reality that you just never imagined before in audio. I think what was so extraordinary about the experience of working in Atmos at Audio Animals was that there's so much more room to finesse and to be creative. I think a lot of the time when you spent so long recording um, acoustically with different instruments, often when you go to a kind of digital platform, it can seem really, really um, compressed or, or kind of uncreative in some way. Whereas this just felt like we had all of the dynamic range that we needed. We had all of the kind of fluidity and, and impulse response that we needed to kind of make something feel organic and true. Whereas, you know, sometimes you feel like you, you spend time battling to reproduce the sounds that you're hearing when you're playing live. This is just something else. This just feels like that transition from playing to mixing to listening back to the final product is seamless. I think the first question you ask as somebody that's investing in a, in a Dolby mix and the Atmos process is, well, what's that end product gonna sound like to somebody who's listening in stereo? Uh, what's it gonna sound like to me when I listen to my own setup? You know, I don't have a, an Atmos setup at home. But I think what that, that sort of misses the point because the point about that process is, um, it's like saying, why didn't you just use an inferior mic or an inferior set of headphones down the line? It's because the nuances, the quality control that can be worked on during that process of mixing is so much more significant that it, just, it, it, it affects it affects the stereo mix so profoundly. And it's very, very difficult to articulate without doing an A-B comparison between a sort of regular stereo mix and something that's been mixed in Atmos going to stereo. But that difference is, it's space, it's dynamic, it's it's basically, even down to simple things like placement of instruments, um, can be so much more delicately worked with in the mix that that stereo bounce down is so profoundly different. Um, and you really notice it, You re especially with acoustic instruments, organic instruments, but I can imagine it working with everything. The real revelation is in just how natural that process feels. It doesn't feel like you're changing your thinking from something musical to something digital and computer-based. It feels like something that, where you're you're imagining and shaping a room as you create it. It's, it's happening all at the same time. And I think that was the real revelation. The other thing is just the dynamic range is so profoundly different. It feels like you have to step back from your expectations of a mix process because Often you walk in already compensating for something that you know can't be reflected, but, but here, here it can be. So you, you can almost walk in and things already sound natural and more uh, more dynamic without you having to touch anything. And then then it's playtime. You know, the difference between mixing in Atmos and mixing in stereo, traditional stereo, is is the difference between clicking on a mouse button and and playing an instrument. You know, the the, the mixing desk is essentially an instrument in this in this situation, and it can be played and it can be harnessed in ways that are really really suitable for each job. You know, it won't do the same thing every time, and that's the true measure of somebody like Paul, who can really really bring to life the project um, as it's meant to be, not just as a kind of you know off the shelf process. I've been working with Paul for a number of years now, and that relationship is founded on just, just mutual respect and the respect that I have for the experience that he has, and the workflow and the professionalism of audio animals in general. But working with Paul this time around in Atmos, it just felt so much more of a collaboration. 
And I think that's truly what you want from a mixing artist or a mastering artist. You want it to feel like they understand the music that you've produced. You want to feel like you're working together on something. And, and that throughout was the experience this time. It just felt like we were able to do something that was truly collaborative and truly musical that didn't just feel like a kind of industrial expectation of just making things and leveling things in the right way. It just felt like we were mining the creativity that was already in the work to create something even more magical. I think there's no way that I'd go into a recording session now without thinking about the possibility of mixing an Atmos. It really has changed not only what I think is possible with what we've recorded, but it changes, I think, the way that we'll record things in the studio is, as well. And that's really exciting because I can't think of such a huge sea change in the way that we consider mixing um, and recording for a mixed product um, that's happened in for decades like this. This is huge. What's great about Atmos is it's clearly going to be a benchmark for all sorts of people in the industry, whether it's musicians, whether it's filmmakers, whether it's people in commercial. This is going to change what your audience hears, whether they're listening on the greatest hi-fi in the world or on their iPhone. It really, really is that profound a difference.